Peaky Blinders is a British gangster series created by Stephen Knight, loosely based on the exploits of the real-life Birmingham gang, the Peaky Blinders, and set in the late 1910s onwards. Thomas Shelby, played by Killian Murphy, leads his gang in the lawless slum neighbourhoods of post-war Birmingham, aiming to increase his family's reach and power. Peaky Blinders is a very popular show here in the UK, and at the time of this review, the show has wrapped with six seasons, though it's not quite over as a movie is planned to conclude the events of the show. I had actually seen the first season of the show already, and I've reviewed it on the channel, which you can check out, so I'll be skipping the first season in this review. That was a few years ago, and though I liked it, for whatever reason, I never really felt compelled to continue with the show at the time. But recently, I binge-watched the rest of the series and had some interesting thoughts. Overall, I liked the show, but I do think it has flaws. For the most part, I find it to be a simple but entertaining show. But somewhere around season 5, I began to get fatigued and I felt a bit mentally checked out. I think my reason for not continuing with this show initially at the time when I saw season 1 had partly something to do with the way in which the show was regarded by many fans. Obviously this doesn't account for everyone and loads of movies like Scarface and The Wolf of Wall Street have fans who take the message the wrong way. But there's loads of people who just really idolise the character of Tommy Shelby. Facebook feeds and YouTube shorts will be full of people who just finished a season and rushed to make a Sigma male grindset video of Tommy Shelby walking in slow motion with some vague, unrelated caption or quote which reeks of edgy desperation. It's just really cringe. There was also a widely held notion that each season of Peaky Blinders consisted of a new villain emerging and surrounding Tommy Shelby from all sides, hopelessly outgunned and outmaneuvered. By the end of the season, through sheer stoicism and sigma male grindsetness, he manages to get the better of them and comes out victorious. Rinse and repeat for each season. <laughs> and to be honest, having seen the whole show, this is kind of true. Every season, an impossible situation emerges for Tommy. His enemies rub their hands in anticipation. His own family doubts him, but somehow he pulls it off against all odds. Going back to the glorification of Tommy, it's something quite different to, say, The Sopranos, where Tony Soprano has charisma and gravita, but you're never left in doubt that he is a toxic person, especially in the final season where they hammer the point home. Something irks me about Peaky Blinders, and I think it's the fact that I think the show itself is actively in love with Tommy and the Shelby gang. The way their actions are carried out, the numerous cool slow-mo shots of the gang walking amid the backdrop of Birmingham, even the way they talk, a kind of snarky, snide, I am always right because I am so cool way. Best exemplified by the character Polly, whose bitchy and fierce attitude is amusing at times, and is also endearing when you consider it's often a front for her insecurities, but it does become quite grating. Anyway, the point I'm making here is that Peaky Blinders feels like it's in love with itself and the Peaky Blinders crew, and that leaves a bit of a bitter taste in my mouth. It's not difficult to see why so many morons make TikTok videos of themselves walking in their garden with their arms out wide like they're carrying heavy shopping bags, because the show itself is leaning into that. I think to a scene where the ladies of the crew are talking among themselves in blunt and awkward dialogue, which sounds like it was written by a man who's never spoken to a woman. But then they all decide they've had enough of working for men who are out having fun and decide to take part in a strike and walk out of their office in simply the only way characters in this show know how, in ultra slow motion. There's another scene, and these are all just examples off the top of my head by the way, where a nurse, or it might have been Lizzie, walks into a room and tells Tommy he needs to be wearing a mask, and he turns dramatically and replies moodily, I am wearing a mask. Get it? Tommy wears a mask in front of the whole world, he hides his real self. If this scene didn't cut away dramatically, how would it have continued, in universe? Would the nurse have then replied, No you're not you silly tosser, put a fucking mask on. What I'm getting at is that the show tries so hard to be cool in every scene, it ends up coming off as forced and corny, and no doubt someone has taken Tommy's badass mask quote and made a Sigma compilation of it online somewhere. And who can blame them? Tommy is just too cool. He's too rigid, too perfect, clever, and superhuman. Frankly, for huge portions of the show, I actually found him kind of boring. 
Arthur was a great character, broken and struggling after returning from war, an animal having been released from within him in the war that he couldn't put back in. Polly was a really interesting character, damaged from losing her kids, caught between her wants and her loyalties. But Tommy, I'm serious, at times he just felt like a plot device. There's a great irony then in that Tommy does get his reckoning, he does start to unravel and he does become a more interesting character as the series goes on, especially in the final two seasons. But this coincides with the quality of the show decreasing. So I finally got what I wanted, the Peaky Blinders realising the kind of shitty people, Tommy in particular, but it was at the expense of the show's quality. And it's really slow. All the slow-mo shots and the dramatic scenes of Tommy brutally staring out of a window do take their toll. I'm not going to lie, I watched chunks of this show at 1.5 speed, and that's because that's the quickest Netflix would let me. I just don't need all these slow-mo shots of people walking. I don't find it as cool as the show thinks I do. Anyway, I'm kind of rambling here. I guess I just needed to get that off my chest. Let's talk a bit about each season. So in season 2... I was pleasantly surprised that Inspector Campbell survived the climax of the previous season. He was an excellent character and it really was interesting seeing him unravel in the second season. His frustration and desperation to get the better of Tommy causing him to lash out and do more and more heinous things. The rivalry between the two was captivating to watch. In this season, Tommy looks to expand his business out to London, which brings the attention of two gangs. The Italians, led by Sabini, and the Jews, who are controlled by Alfie Solomons, played by Tom Hardy. Hardy was a fine addition to the cast. There's something about his character that feels very unpredictable. There was an aura of, like, say, the actor going off script and others having to react to him. He was definitely one of the standouts of the show, though it did feel like he either betrayed Tommy and or died numerous times in the show before coming back and being Tommy's friend. I distinctly remember him supposed to be having cancer at one point, which seemed to just get dropped. But anyway, it's a kind of three-way duel between the Italians, the Jews and the Peaky Blinders. Who will betray who? Who will align with who? All the while Tommy is forced by Campbell for the sake of his family to carry out an assassination. And he knows once he does so, Campbell will have him killed. Will Tommy be able to thwart the rival gangs, take out the target, get the better of Campbell and protect his family? Spoiler alert, he does. Obviously, because he's Tommy Shelby. Don't mess with the Peaky Blinders, etc, etc, etc. I look back on season 2 with fondness. It was a lot of fun. Sam Neill relished his role as Campbell. Hardy is a great addition and it was just a very solid season. A new character is introduced, Michael, one of Polly's children who was taken away from her. He's tracked down, soon to be 18, and upon meeting his real mum and the Peaky Blinders, it becomes immediately apparent that he despises the boring countryside life he has lived with his adopted mother and father. He's a pretty interesting character, his inclusion affects the dynamic between the brothers a little. But the way in which he discards his adopted mother, the way he treats her is shocking and vile, all things considered. Maybe we can discuss him in a future video. Season 3 was a bit of a downgrade, I feel. Tommy was a little more interesting because he experiences a personal tragedy here, but the season is a bit of a weird one. The Shelbys do business with an exiled Russian aristocrat family. and There's a strange psychopathic woman from the family who gets involved with Tommy. The aristocrats are at odds with the Bolsheviks, and Tommy is tasked by Churchill with stealing ammunition for the Russians, something the UK itself can't be seen to do as it would be considered an act of war. There's also an influential UK group called Section D, which a villainous priest, played with venom by Paddy Constantine, is something of an ambassador for them. It all takes a while to get going and for the pieces to come together. Maybe that's why it didn't click with me as much as the previous season. But the climax, the final episode, which it all built up to, was excellent and a really thrilling episode with surprise after surprise, including Tommy's infant son being kidnapped. But I think, just overall, the thing with Churchill, the Russians, the war, blowing up a train, Illuminati shadow organisations, Russian orgies, international espionage, it all just feels like it's departed quite far from the roots of street-level gangs engaging in turf wars. There's a fever dream quality to it. There's so much going on and it feels cluttered. I had no idea what was going on half the time. Everyone just seemed so horny and drugged up. 
Season 4 is probably the most entertaining. It starts firing on all cylinders right from the off, beginning with the scene where the gang are about to be executed because of events in Season 3 and are saved thanks to an instance of Tommy Shelbyism. Then we time jump and things are shaken up, with Tommy in the States, estranged from his family who resent him. But the arrival of an Italian-American mobster, Luca Changretta, the son of someone killed by the Peaky Blinders in Season 3, sparks chaos as he arrives to take revenge on all the Peakies, and he immediately announces his presence by having John killed. It's a shocking start to a very entertaining season. Though to be fair, from a narrative point of view, John's arc was pretty much done, and it wasn't that big of a deal to have him killed off. Tommy arrives back to the UK and a truce between the family is made while they scramble to deal with this new threat, a mobster who seems to be everywhere and nowhere, his power far beyond Tommy Shelby's, and Tommy must utilise all his connections and powers to take on this new challenge. This was a very fun season, there's an aroma in the air, a constant state of tension that Changretta's people could be anywhere. There's some great scenes, like a shootout with Tommy guns, that feels like something out of Bordeaux Empire. Tommy has to bring in some big guns, like contacting Aberama Gold, the very name striking fear into some of the primary characters, as he's apparently a very vicious leader of a vicious bunch. There are some problems though. Firstly, yes, on a technical level, it's a good performance, but Adrian Brody just made me laugh most of the times he was on screen. It's like he just watched The Godfather, and like we all do after we watch it, we try to impersonate Marlon Brando's performance. Listen here now, Michael. I want to make him an offer he can't refuse. What I didn't know that it was Thomas Shelby all this time. It was the Sigma male grind set videos. And that's literally what Brody's performance is. It's a straight up Don Corleone impression, right down to the under the chin scratches, the upside down smile and that grainy voice. It was bloody hilarious and so corny. Weirdly though, it kind of fit because as I've mentioned, the show itself can be quite corny and he struts around looking so cocksure of himself. That makes it 10 times funnier, like Brody thought everyone in the room was witnessing a masterful performance for all the ages. It just comes off as tone deaf, but it's all the more entertaining for it. Going back to Aberama Gold, the reason why we know this guy is on another level is because we're told that before he appears on screen. Another character laments the fact that Tommy has called him and says his people are like animals, but aside from Aberama stabbing someone in his first appearance and subsequently walking around looking like an opportunistic pedo, there's nothing about the guy that shows us he's all that. And then by the time the next season rolls around, he's practically just another guy like everyone. He's like a Peaky Blinder, and you wouldn't even think that he had men working under him. Two issues here. The first is that there's a lot of tell not show in this series. We are bluntly told things, whether they be plans, plots, schemes, character backgrounds, all sorts. And very rarely is our intelligence trusted enough for us to be shown things and then arrive at the conclusions the writers wanted us to. With Aberama, you'd just think he was just another guy had he not been so hyped up by other characters. The second issue, a constant one in the show, our characters who are introduced, they've given like, heavy introductions and they're really hyped up as people who are going to shake things up, only for them to peter out unceremoniously. Luca Changretta runs rings around Tommy, even gets into a hospital and points a gun at Michael just to prove a point before leaving, but the way his character gets written out was so lame. He has Tommy cornered, and then Tommy tells him that he has made a deal with other rival mobsters back in the US and paid off Luca's people, and all of a sudden Luca is on his own. We've never seen these rivals in the US, we've never heard of them. So much is made about blood vendettas and all that, but in the end Luca is defeated by nothing more than a do ex machina. Another Tommy victory, don't mess with the Peaky Blinders. Cue the slow motion victory walk. Oh yeah, and Arthur got a fake death that was so obviously telegraphed by the show, and there was never any real need for Tommy to fake Arthur's death aside from the fact that the show thought it would be more shocking when he returned. There's just a lot of cheap soap opera tricks. There's quite a few characters who get introduced, do a bit of stuff, and then kind of fall by the wayside. Even from within the Peakies themselves, you've got John, and then John dies. He basically gets replaced by the youngest brother Finn for a while, but then Finn takes a back seat because Michael gets a prominent role. 
In later seasons, as they're building to a Michael vs Tommy showdown, Michael spends an entire season in jail. Finn gets something of a Fredo Corleone arc, and it's like the showrunners have realised they've got no young, up-and-coming Peaky Blinder for Tommy to mould as his successor. You know, Michael's now an enemy, Finn's a loser. So they literally throw in a plot about him having a long-lost son in the final season who joins the gang. I think it was like two episodes before the show finished. But that's more final season shenanigans, for which there are a lot of issues. Unresolved plot lines, characters like the Billy Boys who literally disappear after crucifying a youngster, like where the hell did they go? And a few questionable things with the plot, for which I will give the benefit of the doubt for a few reasons. For one, the actress who played Polly died, leaving a massive hole in her wake. She was the second most important character in the show, in my opinion. She was integral, and there was definitely a kind of ghostly empty space around season six. Covid also forced the showrunners to make a lot of changes to the script. And then there's the fact that there is a movie coming out to wrap up the series, so maybe some of these things that happened in season six will be concluded with the movie. Because as it stands, season six does not feel like a satisfying conclusion. For sure, with the final two seasons, something is a little off. The show still looks great, the cinematography has never faltered. But even though they are the two most recent seasons, I had to look them up to remind me what happened in them for this review. They just don't have the strong characters and narrative focus that previous seasons had. Like I said, Tommy is actually at his most interesting in the final two seasons. He thinks more about what he is, what he does. A bit like the last season of Boardwalk Empire or The Godfather Part 3. There is more introspection here. But these are the extra layers of the show. The subtext. The text itself, the main story, is lacking in pump and juice. Tommy partners with the fascist Oswald Mosley. But he's really spying on him for another faction. But he's also spying on them for this faction. And it just kind of goes on like that. And you don't really get a sense of what cause Tommy is exactly loyal to and what his goals are. A lot of cheap tricks are utilised. Like Alfie Solomon's being brought back. And I really don't see a reason for his inclusion aside from fan service. If someone can get shot in the face and then make a return, it cheapens the impact of future deaths because you think at any time a character can make a comeback. It's because of this that there's a real hard-hitting death in season 6 and for a long while I thought it would get revealed that this person would come back, especially as you don't see the body, like with Arthur's fake death. I appreciate Anya Taylor-Joy is supposed to be playing a fiendish character, but when she opens her mouth, I feel like a Suicide Watch hotline number should have appeared on screen. The evil of Mosley doesn't feel justified. It's almost like we're supposed to hate him because of who he was in real life. But in the show, he's just a pompous guy who sits at dinner tables and talks a lot. That's cheap. Guys like Campbell and Luca justified their places as villains from what we saw on screen. Seeds of dissent are sown between Michael and Tommy. They have been in fact since season 2, maybe we can do a video on that, but it builds to a point where they essentially run two separate organisations by the end of the show, and Michael actively hates Tommy and wants him dead in season 6. It's a shame that season 5 built to a showdown in season 6 that clearly had to have major rewrites, and because of what we got, both the final seasons feel like they fall a bit flat, especially the last season. They even set up a mystery at the end of season 5 with a question as to who betrayed Tommy. But we get told this in the first episode of the final season and it was pretty obvious. As mentioned, there's just something empty about season 6. Hardly anyone's in it. Arthur, Michael, Finn, Ada, everyone takes a back seat. Lizzie, I think, had more screen time than all of them put together. And she uses that time to just scream at Tommy constantly to let her into his head. I found Arthur becoming a shell of his former self fascinating, but aside from that, the plots were not really interesting in season 6. Tommy about to have a faked out death felt like it was there to pad out the runtime. Michael spends the season in a jail cell, the Billy boys have disappeared, Finn's ending was a bit bizarre. I mean for him to point a gun at Isaiah and shoot at the Peaky Blinders over the betting guy felt out of character, no matter how weak he was. I don't get where this whole Tommy going sober thing came from. They made a big deal out of him no longer touching alcohol, as if that was the reason for all the hullabaloo of previous seasons. And what a coincidence it is that Tommy is lied to and told he has a brain tumour. 
with the doctor saying he must have been experiencing the effects of it now. At the same time that Tommy was having violent hallucinations and seizures all of a sudden. If the diagnosis was fake, then why was he having these effects? It's just a cheap way for the showrunners to sell that Tommy is really ill. There's a mobster called Uncle Jack who gets a big build up but then disappears. When Michael is finally released, hellbent on revenge as he blames Tommy for his mother's death, he shows up, tells Tommy, you're manipulative and you get loved ones killed. Tommy's like, no, you. And then he shoots him. The end. And then there's Mosley, who's still talking at dinner tables, except this time we see that his wife is the one who wears the trousers in their relationship. Who even is the antagonist in this season? So I think I'll end it there for now. I know it sounds like I'm absolutely roasting the show, but these are just my initial thoughts swimming around in my head after watching it for the first time, and I do have plans to make future videos on it. What do you make of Peaky Blinders? Let me know in the comments section below, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell for more videos, and thanks for watching.